Imagine you're assembling a jigsaw puzzle, but instead of matching shapes, you're connecting categories and observing patterns. In this video, we'll be discussing chi-square testing, where we make sense of categorical data in education. Hi, I'm Matthew Courtney, and here we talk all about education research and data. So if you're into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel and come be a part of our community. The chi-square test is a statistical method used to determine if there's a significant association between two categorical variables. Unlike tests that compare means, chi-square zeroes in on frequency or count data. Let's break down its key components. First, observed frequencies. These are the actual counts we observe in our data. Expected frequencies. Based on chance, these are the frequencies we'd expect if there's no relationship between the variables. Degrees of freedom. This is a crucial parameter that depends on the number of categories in our data. And the test statistic. By comparing observed and expected frequencies, we can compute the chi-square statistic. If it's large, it suggests a possible association between our categorical variables. Consider a school surveying students about their preferred method of learning, visual, auditory, or kinesthetic. They also categorize students by grade level, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. The school wonders if grade level influences those learning preferences. They can answer this question by applying the chi-square test. First, they would count how many students in each grade prefer each learning style. Those are our observed frequencies. Next, assuming no association between grade and preference, we calculate the expected number of students in each combination of categories. Those are our expected frequencies. Finally, the chi-square statistic then measures the discrepancy between our observed and expected counts. If the test is significant, it hints at a possible link between grade level and learning preferences in this particular school. Think of each categorical response as a puzzle piece. When different pieces from different categories fit together more often than we would expect by random chance, the chi-square test flags that and tells us something interesting might be happening here. Let's jump over now to a spreadsheet so I can show you how to perform this type of analysis. Fair warning up front, it's a little fiddly at first, but you'll get the hang of it. First, we want to prepare a contingency table. This is where we're going to list all of those frequencies we discussed before. Let's stick with our learning preferences example. Here, you see a contingency table that shows the count of students at each grade level and how it lines up to the count of students' learning preferences. Next, we want to create an expected values table. To do this, we want to multiply the row total by the column total and divide it by the grand total. I've already completed most of the chart, but let's calculate the expected variables for our senior kinesthetic learners. I will select the empty cell and type equal sign. Inside parentheses, I will then select the row total for my seniors and multiply that by the column total for my kinesthetic learners. I will then divide that by the grand total, which here is in cell E7. My expected frequency here is 42.8. Now we need to calculate the chi-square statistic for each combination. To do this, we will subtract the expected value from the observed value, square that, then divide it by the expected value. I've already done this for most of the cells, but let's do one for our senior kinesthetic learners. In the appropriate cell, I type equal sign open parentheses. I select the corresponding observed value from the contingency table, type a minus sign, then the corresponding cell in the expected values table. I close the parentheses and type caret 2 to square that. Next, I will divide that by the corresponding cell in the expected values table. That's right, we're using this cell twice. The score for this cell is 5.12. Finally, we sum that together to get a chi-square statistic. To do this, we select an empty cell, type an equal sign followed by sum, open parentheses. We select all the cells in our chi-square statistic table, close the parentheses, and hit enter. The chi-square statistic is 56. To determine if the chi-square statistic is significant, we can use the chi-test function. To do so, we'll select an empty cell and type equal sign chi-test, open parentheses. We then highlight our entire observed range, type a comma, highlight our entire expected range, we then close the parentheses and hit enter. This will return the p-value for the chi-square test. 
In this case, as it is below 0 0.05, we can say that the difference between the groups is statistically significant. Okay, so I know that was a lot. So here's my advice for you. If you think you will be performing the chi-squared test using a spreadsheet again sometime soon, save this one with all the formulas intact. Then all you'll have to do in the future is update the values in your contingency table to instantly complete the process. If you found value in this video today, make sure to like and subscribe and check out some of the other videos in this playlist. I'll see you next time.